How would I describe my first trimester experience? Mm, nauseating. I think I have a pretty good idea what hell is like. I had no idea what I was getting into. I hated being pregnant. Welcome back to a new video. If you're new here, my name is Andrea and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more pregnancy related content as well as lifestyle and vegan baking videos. Today I'm going to be sharing all about my first trimester experience and the things that really surprised me that probably shouldn't have surprised me, but they did. And I hope that this prepares you better to go into your first trimester or that if you've already been there, done that, it, uh, it just gives you something to relate to or not because I know everyone's first trimester is very, very different. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is the nausea. Oh, the nausea. Everyone tells you that your pregnancy is going to be similar to your mom's or your grandma's and it just gets kind of passed down in the family of how you're going to handle pregnancy. Well, let me tell you, uh, my mom and grandmother had amazing pregnancies. They tell me they had absolutely no weird symptoms. They felt completely normal throughout. They had good appetites and they loved being pregnant. So naturally, I thought I'd have the same experience. So going into it, I just assumed that I'm gonna like love preg being pregnant and just have this amazing nine months of pregnancy. Well, I would say my nausea started about a month to a month and a half into being pregnant and it was not just morning sickness, and we all know now that morning sickness does not mean it just hits in the morning and then for the rest of the day you're fine. Nausea can come and go at absolutely any time of the day. It can come in waves, or like me, if you're lucky, <laughs> you can have it 24 seven all the time. So from the moment that I woke up to the moment that I went to bed, I just felt nauseous and I, I never threw up because of my nausea, thank goodness, but <laughs> it's still really not fun to be constantly nauseous all the time. I really struggled with kind of this guilt every day because I really did not want to eat anything. Like when you're nauseous, you obviously have no appetite. So I felt horrible because here I was trying to nourish my body for my baby and the last thing that I wanted to do was eat. Eating was not fun for me at all and it was the first time I developed this like really hateful relationship with food because I just basically forced myself to eat for the sake of growing my baby. So the worst part about being nauseous all the time is obviously you're still going to work, you're still living your life, and you can't tell anyone that you're pregnant. I guess you could tell someone, but most people like to keep it to themselves for like the first three months or once you get through that first trimester, especially your coworkers and telling your boss at work. So I did this, I didn't tell anyone, but there did come a point where I wasn't ready to announce my pregnancy, but I actually had a chat with my boss and let her know because I was feeling really horrible. I was sick a lot during my first trimester, so I was away a lot and I just kind of wanted to explain my absences that, you know, it was pregnancy related and that I was really not doing well. And just to have somebody to know at work kind of where you're at, it felt good to know that, okay, well, at least she knows that I'm pregnant and that's why I might not look so great when I'm walking around work. So imagine you are experiencing two and a half months of just solid nausea. Um, by the end of it, I was getting really depressed actually. I was not feeling like myself for obvious reasons. I just always felt horrible. I felt off. And like I said, I didn't wanna eat. That was like a big part of my life that changed. 
I just started feeling really, really depressed. And I felt like I'm never gonna get out of this. Like this nausea is just, this is it. This For the rest of my life, I'm gonna feel this way. And it's just funny, because that's such an irrational thought. You're obviously not gonna feel that way forever. But when you're living it day to day, for those two and a half months, it just feels like forever. The days do not go by fast. Thankfully, I did get out of it. I'm currently in um, just about the middle of my second trimester, so I'm happy to report it does end at some point. At the time, I was really feeling down, and I think it's totally normal, And but I've never heard anyone kind of talk about that. I've heard so much about postpartum depression, but during pregnancy depression, I never really heard about. For me, that was, that was a real thing that I experienced. Now, there are some things that you can do to help with nausea. And this is what really helped me, even though I still felt terrible all the time. It was something that I could kind of turn to for a little bit of relief at times. For me, the big thing was, is never being on an empty stomach. How do you do this? You don't wanna eat anything. How do you not be on an empty stomach? So snacking on things that were just super bland, like crackers, bread, toast, that kind of stuff, anything that you could stomach, maybe granola bars, things like that, anything kind of dry and bland. And just to constantly be snacking throughout the day, they actually say that your nausea is way worse on an empty stomach. The moment that you wake up, keep like a box of crackers on your night table. And before you even literally get out of bed, take a few bites of crackers just to kind of like settle your stomach or not have it to be super empty first thing in the morning that helps a lot as well as just some natural kind of remedies they didn't completely work for me like the ginger didn't do anything for me but what i did find was drinking tea with lemon in it helped as well as every evening, I started drinking peppermint tea and this really kind of helped settle my stomach um, right before going to bed because I was always the worst in the evening. All right, so something that I did not expect needing right away in my early pregnancy was maternity wear. Now, every article that I read or advice that I would get was like, well, at least you don't need to buy maternity wear until your second trimester. At least you won't be showing for such a long time. All your clothes are going to fit you, so you don't have to worry about dressing any differently for the first few months. Well, for me, I got bloated really, really fast. That was one of my first pregnancy symptoms, and it was very uncomfortable to wear my regular pants. So I did not listen to the advice and I did go out and get some maternity wear because it was the only thing that I was going to be able to be comfortable in. I tried wearing my pants and it was really, really uncomfortable that the second I would get into my car after work, I would just unbutton my pants because it was really tight. So, and I'm talking like within just a first, like the first few weeks of finding out that I was pregnant, my pants were already not fitting around the waist. So the first thing that I bought was just a typical like pair of black leggings, but I got them in a size up. So they're a little bit roomier. They still like fit, they don't look saggy, but they are um, much more comfortable around the waist. And everything that I got was from Old Navy. I do not believe in spending a lot of money on maternity wear that you're not gonna wear over and over again especially if you're only planning to have one child, which I might be only planning to have one child, I don't know yet. I highly recommend looking into Old Navy or other kind of less expensive stores for this kind of maternity wear, or also shopping secondhand. The other thing that I got was a pair of pants that I could wear to work. So I'm not gonna wear leggings to work, but I needed um, work pants. So I got these black, um, like skinny jeans that are not actually jeans so they do look professional and they have this really nice stretchy elastic waist that comes up like that and they were fitted enough that they weren't like falling off because my stomach wasn't really 
pregnant just yet, but they definitely gave me that comfort that I needed with, for my bloat. And I also got another pair of leggings, which I'll show you. I'm wearing them right now. So they have this nice uh, band that goes all the way up. And obviously it accommodates my second trimester belly, but it still fit in the first trimester. It wasn't like slipping down or anything. And again, it was just really comfortable and I could layer bigger sweaters on top and just feel really comfy. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is the cravings. So my mom, she had absolutely no specific cravings. She just said she had a really good appetite. She wanted to eat all the time. But this is the one thing that I have in common with my grandmother um, that she craved potatoes throughout all of her pregnancies. I had the same thing. I wanted potatoes all the time, every meal and any form. I wanted baked potatoes, potato wedges, french fries. Um, what's that thing that you grate the potato? Uh, you fry it in a pan, eat it with ketchup. I wanted that. So I wanted everything just made with potatoes. That's all I wanted to eat. Now, I think um, I definitely read that if you crave more like salty things versus sweet things, it means you're having a boy. So I'm convinced I'm having a boy just for that. Um, but this was really interesting to me because I've never had such like i've had cravings like all the time i've always had cravings for things for random things but this was so specific and it just lasted for such a long time but i should mention so this was kind of just before the nausea started creeping in so even once i did get nauseous just at the beginning of it i still wanted potatoes so the weirdest thing to me was to crave things even though you did not want to eat, you felt disgusting, you felt like you were going to throw up all the time, but then you'd have these moments where you're just like, oh, I really want some french fries. It was just so confusing and I could not wrap my head around it. And speaking of cravings, I am craving my hot chocolate. Uh, let's, uh, let's go make some hot chocolate. Come on. Um, in addition to potatoes, I just wanted kind of salty, savory things in general. And it's kind of really shocking for someone like me because I'm a pastry chef. I love desserts. I love sweets. On a regular basis, I am craving like three things at a time, sweet. And for the first time in my life with this pregnancy, I have not craved sweet things. Every now and then I'll crave chocolate or I'll crave like a cookie or something like that, but nowhere near to how badly I was craving these things when I was not even pregnant. That was really, really interesting for me. Now, in addition to cravings, I was very surprised by my food aversions. Being a vegan, I eat a lot of vegetables. It's part of like every single meal. And in the evenings, we typically will steam or roast a bunch of different vegetables and use them for meals. This was the first time in my life that the smell of steaming broccoli or cauliflower or roasting like red cabbage or any kind of vegetable really, that just the smell of it made me want to gag. Like it was the most disgusting smell in the world to me. That was really, really surprising to me. And also kind of like, I just felt really bad because I knew that I should be eating vegetables, but I just wanted nothing to do with vegetables. As well as these like very specific food aversions, certain types of meals just completely put me off. 
um, like to think about having to eat that, I was just like, oh no, I don't want that, for sure no. So for example, my husband would be like, hey, do you want some pasta? I'm cooking pasta. And I would just be like, no. Until this next thing happened to me, I just never even thought about it. Apparently your immune system is very, very low during pregnancy, which makes complete sense. Like all of your immune system is going to protect the baby first and foremost, whatever is left over is for the mama. And in my case, it feels like there's absolutely nothing left. I do work with kids, a lot of kids. So I am, I guess, more at risk of getting sick often, but I just did not expect this part of my first trimester experience. I got sick on two separate occasions. The first occasion, it was just kind of like your common cold, but three weeks long and never goes away kind of feeling. So I got a cold and I actually got like a bit of a cough with it too. And it was just a viral infection. But um, when you're pregnant, you cannot take medications, which is just so lovely. So everything is natural and you cannot use the help of medicine in this case. So of course, because your immune system is super low as well, your recovery time is a lot longer. And this just really surprised me. It threw me off guard. And on top of the wonderful feeling of nausea all the time, then you are sick at the same time. And that's when I was really like, we really want this baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but no you're you're like this is this is the worst thing ever but then it was over and okay that was fine but the second time that I got sick wow it made that first time look like a walk in the park so the second time that I got sick it came on very suddenly and very very badly <laughs> So within like a day and a half, I had high fever, the chills, I was hot and clammy, and I had absolutely zero, zero appetite to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't eat anything. And I would take a sip of water and within half an hour, I vomited it up. So I got to the point where I could keep absolutely nothing down. And this lasted for like about two days until I decided that I need to go to the hospital. So within that first day and a half that I had my symptoms starting, I developed a really bad cough just really suddenly. And it, I could feel that it was like really, really deep in my chest. When I was checked out by the doctor and she checked my breathing, she could hear some fluid or so she thought. So the first thing that she thinks is it could be pneumonia which is very serious that if you do have pneumonia you want to be able to confirm it or not because of the way that it could affect your developing baby especially in that vulnerable first trimester i was faced with this kind of predicament where you either get an x-ray while pregnant just to find out if you actually do have pneumonia so that it could be treated accordingly or you don't get an x-ray and then you really don't know what's happening to you or your baby. I did speak with the nurses and the doctor and they did reassure me that the level of radiation that I would be exposed to would be so, so small. I mean, they said that if you get on an airplane and travel somewhere, you're actually exposed to far more radiation than you would be in this one x-ray and they put the double kind of lead um, apron things on you and they put this wall too. And so I, I just felt like I had no choice. I had to do it. It was something that was just important to do at the time. I didn't feel good about it at all. I still think about it even now that I wish I'd never had to get that x-ray done, but I ha it had to be done. The good news is, is that I did not have pneumonia, even though I did have um, a chest infection. It was a viral chest infection. Once I got hooked up to the IV and they let the fluids in and rehydrated me, I started feeling a little bit better and it, it did really help uh, get that hydration back. After that, I was just kind of like taking um, electrolytes, fluids, 
and eventually I made a, a good recovery and was able to eat again and all that stuff. But that was just a big scare and I just never even thought about the getting sick part of pregnancy and how that would be different from not being pregnant and being sick and how you're treated and all that. The very last thing that I want to talk about my first trimester experience is just this feeling of not being excited about being pregnant. And I started to feel that pressure, even though nobody was really putting that pressure on me. Very few people even knew that I was pregnant. So it's not like people were asking me about the pregnancy or anything like that. I just had certain expectations for what pregnancy would be like. And with all of these things that I've shared with you today, the bad things um, as like being sick and the nausea and all of that and feeling depressed by the end of that first trimester, I just was not happy about being pregnant. I didn't like being pregnant at all. I was having a terrible time and I just, I just felt bad, you know? I felt like this is the, one of the most exciting times of my life that I'm living right now and I'm just not excited about it. And I'm not thinking about, you know, kind of the end result. I'm just thinking about how do I get through this next week of how I'm feeling. So that was just kind of hard to, hard to deal with really because you do have these certain expectations from society or whatever that makes pregnancy seem like it's all rainbows and sunshine where there are some really tough moments and things that you have to deal with, um, especially in that first trimester when everything is just so fresh. I mean, I'm in my second trimester now and it's still, I still like don't even know that I'm pregnant sometimes. I'm just like, how, what the, I don't get it. How did this happen? <laughs> I mean, for me specifically, once all of my symptoms started alleviating, I, that's when I really started getting excited as well as when your stomach starts growing that's pretty exciting as well because then it feels real and also kind of having your ultrasounds and hearing the baby's heartbeat those are the moments that just pull you right back to it and then you remember what this is all about there is hope at the end of the first trimester I promise unless you're the unlucky type that does experience nausea throughout your pregnancy. I've heard of this too. Everyone's pregnancy is unique to them. As much as you can relate to certain parts, you're still gonna have feelings or things that you're gonna go through that might just be so specific to you. So there is absolutely no normal first trimester whatsoever. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helped you and did not completely scare you about the first trimester. Um, just hopefully makes you feel a little bit more prepared or that you can relate to things that have been happening in my first trimester. If this video was helpful for you or you enjoyed listening to it, please give it a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications for my next video. I put out videos every Sunday about pregnancy, vegan baking, and lifestyle in general. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.